Hi, I'm Valley from Greenwood Solutions. This week's riveting video presentation is on solar panel temperature coefficients. So after watching the video, you'll understand the role of electrons, why heat is the biggest killer of solar panel output, and how to actually measure the temperature coefficient of a solar panel. So strap yourself in, hit that subscription button, and let's get stuck into it. Although temperature doesn't affect the amount of solar energy a solar panel receives, it does affect how much power you will get out of it. As solar panels get hotter, they produce less power from the same amount of sun. And normally, electrons at rest, a low energy situation, are excited by the sun and they move into a high energy situation. The difference between their excited and rest energies is the potential difference, the voltage. So the temperature coefficient of a panel is very important, but it's not the be all or end all. Um, in previous videos, we have talked about uh, solar panel uh, degradation and actually the efficiency of a solar panel. And all of these things um, play a big role in the actual output of that panel. But heat also excites electrons. When we heat something, we give it energy. And this raises the energy of the electrons at rest. Warmer electrons have more energy at rest than their cold counterparts. Light is composed of a huge number of photons, particles which carry the energy associated with light. When they hit the solar cell, they bump into an electron and give it the energy they were carrying. The electron goes from a low energy state to a high energy one. The solar cell is designed to extract the energy from this electron when it's in a high energy state. The solar cell runs it through an electrical circuit to use up this extra energy that the electron has. And sometimes though, this high energy electron will bump into other atoms in the solar cell. Before it gets out, the electron loses this extra energy, which turns into heat rather than electricity. And heat is the vibration of atoms and molecules. If the solar cell is at a higher temperature, that means that the atoms are vibrating faster. And this means that it is harder for the electron to get out without bumping into these atoms. So when the solar cell heats up, the output power will drop because more of the energy is lost before it manages to escape the solar cell. Power is produced from the difference in the states at rest and excited by the sun. If the electrons have more energy at rest, your solar panels are hotter. The difference between the rest energy and excited energy from the sun is smaller and our solar panels will produce less energy. A simple analogy would be to consider a water slide from the top of a building. We have a building five stories high. If you built the water slide from the top floor to the bottom, you'd go really fast. However, if you built it from the top floor to the third floor, you wouldn't be able to get going as fast. Your difference in potential energy from gravity is converted into speed. The main effect of temperature on solar panels is that it reduces the efficiency of the solar cells at converting solar energy sunlight into electricity. Chemical reactions that occur within the solar panel are more efficient at cooler temperatures. A solar panel in the hot desert may produce a little less electricity per amount of sunlight than a solar panel in a cold climate area. This inefficiency is made up though by the greater number of sunny days in the desert. So effectively the ideal situation for a solar panel is, is really long sun hours, like a day that has a lot of available sun but a really cool temperature. Unfortunately this is not the case in, in, in most situations. All solar cells have a temperature coefficient. The percentage of power lost at a specific degree measurement above the industry standard is divided by the number of degrees above 25 degrees C to provide the temperature coefficient. If you're looking at a solar panel at 28 degrees, this is at three degrees higher than the industry standard. If you observe a power loss of 1.08% at that temperature, you divide that power loss by three, three degrees more than 25 degrees, to get 0.36, or a temperature coefficient 
of negative 0.36% per centigrade power max. Let's say we have a 350 watt monocrystalline solar panel installed on a roof and it's at 65 degrees C. The solar panel's power loss can be calculated as follows. 65 degrees C minus 25 degrees equals 40 degrees C. 40 degrees C times 0.36 is 14%. Therefore, the panel power loss is 14% and you multiply that by 350 watts and you've lost 49 watts. So the panel peak output is now 301 watts in this example. The primary way to mitigate loss in efficiency is through the reduction in the temperature of your solar panels. And here are some of the factors that influence the panel's temperature. Now where the solar panels are installed plays a role with their temperatures. The type of solar panel installation has a direct effect on the panel's temperature. For example, if an angled roof mount system, uh, in other words tilt, is at 30 degrees, that same system, but flat to the roof, may be at 35 degrees C, so there's a five degree difference. Thin film solar panels have a lower temperature coefficient than traditional monocrystalline or poly panels, and thin film panels can see temperature coefficients closer to 0.2% um, per degree centigrade. The material of your roof can have an impact on the solar panel's temperature. Certain rooftops absorb more heat than others. Make sure to take into account your roof type when making your analysis. Power temperature coefficient is measured in percentage per degree C. Uh, low is more efficient. Uh, for instance, polycrystalline cells, um, 0.39 to 0.43%. Monos, 0.36 to 0.4. Uh, monocrystalline IPC cells 0.29 to 0.31, monocrystalline HJT cells 0.26 to 0.27. Uh, generally cell temperature is 20 to 30 degrees higher than the ambient air temperature which equates to approximately a 8 to 12 percent reduction in power output. Note, cell temperatures can rise as high as 80 degrees C when mounted on a dark coloured rooftop during very hot 40 degree windless days. Conclusion. The hotter the temperature, the less power is produced by the solar panel. This is due to the nature and movement of electrons. All solar panels have a temperature coefficient which can be obtained from the data sheet. There are other factors that influence the solar panel's ability to achieve optimum output. Thanks so much for watching our presentation on solar panel temperature coefficients. I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions and if you have any inquiries, any questions, any answers, feel free to drop us a line and hit that subscription button if you see fit. See you next time.